Hello, what is up guys? Today we're doing a video on an interesting operating system I found called Tiny7. It's basically a stripped down version of Windows 7 with really low system requirements. So if you have an older computer but you still want to put Windows on it, then you can try out Tiny7 and in theory it should run better since it's got a lot of the useless stuff disabled. And so here we've got um, a VM today which I'm going to be using to demonstrate it and I'm just going to be calling my OS Tiny7 and Microsoft Windows, Windows 7 64 bit is good. I'm going to hit next and I'm going to give 2 gigs of RAM to it to simulate what a lower end system would look like. I'm going to hit next. I'm going to create a hard drive right now. Uh, that'll be fine. Next. And I'll do dynamically allocated. That'll be cool. And I'm going to give it a 20 gig hard drive to use for this example and hit create. All right, so now I'm going to put in the ISO for uh, Tiny7 and boot off of that. So let me go to my ISOs and find that quickly. All right, so now we're going to start it up and we're just going to go through the install and then we're going to test out the system after it's done. All right, so it starts off by loading the Windows installer files as it usually does. And now you can see we're already into the Windows setup. All right, so here we're just going to choose the unallocated space and hit next. And it's going to begin copying the Windows files over. Compared to a usual Windows 7 uh, ISO, which is, I believe, about 3 to 4 gigs, this one's only 700 megabytes, so it should be a lot quicker than a usual Windows install. So you can see here we're already at 20% uh, in on the expanding Windows files, which is much quicker than it would usually be. And then after that, we should be moving on to the uh, rest of the installation. So this is already going very quickly for a Windows install. I must admit, I've never actually been for a Windows install which is this quick before. I've only ever gone through painfully slow Windows installs which usually take about half an hour. Alright so it's just coming to the end now of the expanding Windows files and it's going to move on to the rest of the installation. Well it seems to be getting a bit stuck on this bit here. And there we go it's done. It's installed the features and it should be installing the updates although I don't believe there was any updates in with this. There might be Service Pack 2 slipstreamed into it. And there we go, it's already restarting, so we're just going to hit restart now to get it done quickly. And then we're going to ignore this because we want to boot from the hard drive now, not the CD. And we're already on the starting Windows screen, which is very, very nice. And it's going to update the registry and all that stuff. And we're into the final part of the setup. Alright, so it's just completing the installation now, which shouldn't take too much longer because the bulk of the install has already been done when it was uh, copying the files over. Alright, so it's going to reboot again and it's going to ask if you want to boot from the DVD. We're just going to ignore that. And it's going to start Windows up again. So that's the second restart now, so we should be coming towards the end of the installation. And you can see we're now preparing the computer for the, for the first use, which is a very good sign when we're uh, installing Windows. I must admit I haven't seen this screen in a while because I haven't installed Windows 7 in so long. The last thing OS I installed was Windows 8? Not even 8.1. Yeah, I haven't installed Windows in a long time. Windows 7, that is. So this is probably just benchmarking the uh, graphics we have on this system, which is not sure how that's going to turn out because we are running this in a VM, not an actual machine. But here we go, we're starting uh, to prepare the desktop, which is a very, very uh, hopeful sign. So after this, we should be good to go. And here we go, we're in, and the uh, ISO is just activating Windows, so once that's done, it should be all good. Although, hang on, it's going to ask us to set up the network as well, so it's probably not going to, might not work, so we'll just choose home network here. because it might not be able to activate it without uh, the network access. So that should be good. Yep, private. All right, so it's still activating Windows, but let's go into Task Manager and check the system performance. And we can see we are using 400 megabytes of RAM, not even that, 396 megabytes of RAM after the first boot, which is very, very nice. That makes a much appreciated change Usually on my uh, main computer, when we boot, we're usually, uh, even when I, even, I've limited it to 2 gigabytes around before, and it uses still considerably more amount than this. So that is very nice. If we go over to applications, uh, let's go to here, and we'll see what's using up all the CPU right now. 
Oh, so it does appear to be the activation thing, which is going on in the background. So we'll just minimize that. And it's going to ask to recycle computer, but we'll do that later. Now we've got a folder here from the person who made the ISO experience. So in here we've got a bunch of stuff. We've got um, maybe some uh, we've got some advanced settings and such. So there we go. Uh, that's the activation done. So it's actually asking us to restart our computer. So I'll quickly go and restart it now. Oh, did it without my uh, did it without me asking. All right, cool, whatever. <laughs> Guess we're rebooting the computer then. And we'll just ignore this so we can boot from the hard drive again. And starting up Windows again. So here we go, preparing the desktop for the final time, I believe. And here we go, we're in, and we've got all our stuff together. So this is what the desktop looks like after you install it. Whether that's your thing, I'm not too sure, but that's it's quite a horrible uh, looking desktop, if I do say. I'm going to quickly try and increase the resolution, because this is awfully low. How high does it go? We can go, sir. We can go about this big. That should be good. Shit, that's too big. Let me dial it back down a bit. There we go. So we've got a decently big resolution now. Uh, let me quickly see if I can change it in the virtual machine. No, we haven't. We can't change it. Probably because of some missing graphics drivers or something. Which is a shame. But we do have full network access. How you get into that, I am about to find out. So it does look like we've got a bit of a modified uh, Windows Explorer here. It's not like the uh, usual one, the bars missing on the side, so this is a slightly customised operating system. But as far as minimalism goes, it is very good in performance. So you can see we're idling now on 330 megabytes of RAM, which is very, very low, so any system can probably put this up. So we've got everything here. This appears to be some sort of file browser, I guess? It is, it's just some huge file browser. All right. So here we've got a TCP IP patch. I wonder what this is for. So we double click on that and open the README. One click patch. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so this is just um, to change some of the way, uh, deeper configurations within uh, Tidy7. I must admit, uh, this is already going a lot better than it was with uh, Micro XP, which I tried, which is also from the same guy experience. At least this one can actually establish uh, network access. So let's try and open up a, a page. So let's open up run and try to do google.com. Okay, that's not going to happen, is it? Let's try and just go to this Microsoft link. Okay, so we do have Internet Explorer. And it does have Internet access. So we can actually... Internet Explorer 8, that is. So it's uh, rather outdated. But we do have Internet access, which is a lot better than what we had on Micro XP. So let's see if I can go over to YouTube and just uh, test this on a modern page. Probably going to fail horribly because this is a very, very old browser. Yeah, okay. So we can't actually connect. This is There's probably a okay, configuration I'm missing in here. Maybe to do with the firewall or the, uh, the TCP IP patch. Let's try this quickly. Let's patch this. Yep, we're using English. Uh, I have no idea what I'm doing. But alright, yeah. Okay, so it has just automatically applied all the settings and now wants to restart my computer, which is interesting. We still can't get internet access, which is a shame, unfortunately. But yeah, I'm sure with a little bit more configuration, you could get this to work. So I'm going to quickly restart the computer and see if I can get network to work. Alright, so now we're back into Tiny7 and it does appear that networking is working. But we can't seem to get access through any web browser. So I'm going to quickly open up uh, Command Prompt and try and ping one of Google's servers to see if it responds. So we do have working Internet access. It just doesn't appear to work through Internet Explorer, which is a shame. So, oh, open that by accident. Nope. So that's a shame. Um, I'm assuming if you just copied over some other web browser, for example, Chrome or Firefox, you could probably install it off of a memory stick or something. But it doesn't appear to be working with the inbuilt um, browser. So if I go over here and just go to Google or something. Yeah, it can't It can't connect. So we'll try and diagnose connection problems, which we couldn't do in XP, though. And we'll see if we can fix it. But if not, then we'll just have to um, accept that it can't get network through the default browser. Yeah, it couldn't identify the problem, so that's a shame. Um, it is a it is a real shame that we can't get network on this because this is a very very cool operating system. A modern 
ish operating system like Windows 7 uh, stripped down to this bare, um, uh, with, and with this good performance, would be really cool to install on some older machines. But unfortunately, I can't give it the pass if it doesn't actually have working internet access, which is a big, big shame. Alright, so thank you all for watching my uh, overview of Windows uh, 7, or rather Tiny 7. Uh, if you want to see more interesting OS videos like this, uh, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.